Hello and welcome to Sydney Harbour, the perfect setting down under New South Wales for the Australian Sail Grand Prix Sydney, presented by KPMG. Here we go and it's Ben Ainsley on the British boat, diving through in the middle of the line. Looks like he could be early here with three seconds to go to the start. Look for the line to go white. Is it clear? It's clear. It's now a sprint. Can Phil Robertson and the Spanish team hold on? So Phil Robertson on the inside line, just to his right, has been easily out of with Great Britain Sail GP. Here we go to mark number one, race number one. It's a nice job on the inside there by Phil Robertson on the Spanish team. They lead right in the mark, second place for Great Britain. It's Quentin de Pierre in fourth, just behind Tom Slingsby and his Australian crew. This first manoeuvre, look at the British crew, leads the jibe away. Tactical strong manoeuvre there as the crews jibe right in front of this spectator fleet on Sydney Harbour. And they'll be searching for Breeze. Early jibe away by Berlin, but it's Ainsley and the British crew made that decision and it's both speed now. It's tight here, look at that starboard advantage is with Australia, Ainsley now on the inside, he will gain the rights, all these other boats must keep clear, a lot of action coming in here, could get busy for Craig Mitchell, but no, but Ainsley sneaks around the mark, brilliant manoeuvring there, and it's things be on the Australian boat that stays on the floor, he'll be the fastest as he's up and foiling, but on the inside it's Ben Ainsley, tactically great manoeuvre there. Advantage Great Britain, Phil Robertson has lost some distance, Ainsley's in a dark patch of water, more wind, and look at that, in the blink of an eye, it's a 200 metre change of distance, one mistake, that Chicago just did not work for Australia, is it all Ainsley jibes, match race jibe from Phil Robertson, it's all action on this downwind leg, who can stay on the foils, who can keep it fastest, it's tight at the top, an absolute great race, as Spain comes down, and they are making their way down, we're being told now they're finishing at the next mark, as Australia now has issues with Denmark, who have moved ahead of them. The umpires, penalty Denmark relative to Australia, penalty Denmark relative to Australia. Phil Robertson and Spain Sail GP coming to the finish line, and this is going to be close as Britain tries to make a final dash. They will run out of room, and it will be Spain getting the winning race one. Great Britain will have to settle for second. And it's Phil Robertson on the Spanish boat and the New Zealand team at the bottom end of the line. How's their timing going to be as they're trying to come in here, control the speed. It's going to be Australia in the middle of the line. Great Britain looking for the pole position spot out of the top of the line there. Here comes USA and Jimmy Spittier wants for the line to go right over early. Jake, Australia, America. Uh, penalty USA. Uh, over the, over the start Off line by early. a half a second, the USA went aggressive. They needed a result, and they get an early penalty. Well, and it's Japan at the bottom end of the line there. The Japanese, they timed it perfectly. He needed a big start, and he's got it on the Japanese boat. Spain have got to drop back two boat lengths relative to Nathan Outridge, and he's going to take a while to scrub that penalty off here relative to them. Great Britain and Ben Ainsley round in third place, and it's Delapierre again doing a good job fourth at the mark as we set up for the first jive on board Japan. If Ainsley can dive inside, he'll have an opportunity at the bottom of the course here, but Japan should be coming in faster. Probable lead for Nathan Aldridge around gate number two, but Ainsley just trying to dive inside here. I think Aldridge is far enough ahead of the Japanese boat, who should be as he turns up. And third place again, Phil Robertson. Is he your spoiler, Freddie Carr? The USA guys have done a masterful job. Jimmy Spinner is already up to third place after a sixth place finish in race number one. Yeah, big moments in the race here, third and through to eighth. This is the dogfight. This is the race that could really set your weekend up. Big moments for the hometown team, Australia, as they're trying to pick through from last place. So race number two at the Australia Sail Grand Prix City goes the way of the Japanese as they get the win. A nice bounce back from race number one. The consistency award so far here in Australia has to go to Spain. A first and a second in the first two races. Japan leading the fleet back early. Spanish team have control of the bottom end of the line at the moment with 19 seconds to go. I think oh, 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 no, the British crew have cruised. They have no rights there. Lost control of the boat. That's going to be disaster for the Japanese and the British. There, that is unbelievable. You've got to be kidding me, says Nathan Aldridge, and I can quite believe that. There goes 
used the gun. Okay. Phil Robertson oh. on the Spanish boat did have control. Brilliant right. start by the Spanish. Much. Brilliant start by Tom Slingsby. And it's Peter Berlin third off the line, but that is not the story of that start. A massive miscalculation from Ainsley. And there is no power on the Japanese boat. Disaster. We're on board at the back of the Japanese boat. Look at the British boat leap out of the water. And look at that. Oh my lord. The forces involved there. Unbelievable. Watch the foil on the British boat. Right hand side of the screen. It's going to cut into the Japanese hull. Look at the load there. Arms up. Unbelievable. Great Britain was okay, sitting fourth with 40 points, and okay, guys, I don't know yeah. if Japan's going to be able to sail tomorrow three. as we focus our attention Two. on this third and final Five. race, and it is Spain out in front with Australia, the defending champion sitting in second. Oh Look at the boat speed on the Australian boat. Big lead change here, 100 metres ahead, as Phil Robertson in second, dropping back, but this race, wow, it's tight in the fleet, but there's more drama far away from it. Pretty nicely done there, really, by the Australian crew. And, well, that was a textbook race. Well, it was a great recovery, Tom. Quite right. On the back foot after that last one. But as they come into the finish of race three here, just 11 minutes of racing, and it's a race win for Australia. Fantastic work for the crew there. Nice tonic to finish the day yeah, with. They'll be needing that. The home fans are going to be boosted by that and a great bit of momentum to go into day two and the final day of racing. Hello and welcome to Sydney Harbour for what promises to be an eventful second day of the Australian Sail Grand Prix, Sydney, presented by KPMG. The crowds are out in force on this stunning waterway and they are in for a treat with a weather forecast that promises strong winds and high adventure on the crowded stadium course. Here they come, New Zealand gapping off towards the left, they're going to be very fast at the gun. How's the timing for Peter Burling and Blair Took at this top end of the line? Aldridge and the Japanese turning down soon, 2-1, watch the line, what a start by the Kiwi crew, 88 kilometers an hour, unbelievable speed, can they control the line? The hole's too hard, they're right on the edge, it's bucking its way down to mark one. An amazing start for the Kiwis as they head towards mark number one. Here in race number four, seven boats on the water, seven legs of racing here in Sydney. There we go. Go, boys, go, boys, go, boys. That's the voice of Peter Burling on the New Zealand boat talking to the big grinders at the front there. That wing sail's got to come in after the bear away. Brilliant work from the New Zealand crew there. And we're going to set up for the jibe here. New Zealand were 30 kilometers an hour faster than anyone else when the gun went. That was a really nice time run off the top of the line by Burling and his Kiwi crew. Well, yeah, we look at the results at the moment, we see that the Spanish crew of Phil Robertson has moved up to fifth, but Tom Slingsby, well, he looked comfortable, but he's having a bad race. This could turn things on their head at the moment. It's very gusty. You see the texture on the water there, the darker patches, that's more wind. Find more wind and you're going to sail faster, but looks to me like there's plenty of wind, generally speaking, everywhere. And Aldridge and his Japanese crew are definitely close to difference on Peter Berlin, but as they turn away at gate three, still in the lead is New Zealand and Peter Burley. What a comeback in a new boat this would be. Watch that board lock down. Outridge watching it like a hawk. Board locks in place. Starts the turn and now we see Chris Draper left side of the shot. He's steering the boat while Nathan crosses. It's real multitasking in this big breeze. Here comes Tom Slingsby on a charge. Slingsby and Spitter have closed the distance and it's all on on this last upwind leg before they're going to turn and blast away from the wind one last time. Here we go, tight manoeuvre, Berling needs to do two drives, he has the right to turn on the inside but can Outridge get through here, it's going to be close, Outridge coming in a lot faster, 20 kilometres an hour to speed, Outridge tries to slide around the outside, who can reach that out quickest, New Zealand must keep clear, New Zealand, oh there's going to be a protest, oh there's going to be a protest on that one. Penalty New Zealand, penalty New Zealand, relative Japan, penalty New Zealand, relative Japan. And they are going to drag race it to the line. The Kiwis have the lead, but waiting for the penalty that comes on the Kiwis, which will hand a race four to the Japanese. It's a birthday one for Leo Takahashi today. What a finish that was. Jimmy Spitzel in third, Tom Slingsby. Submarines through the finish line in fourth. What a finish. Who's going to get the boat up to speed the quickest? Watch for the line to go wide. It's all clear. Burling diving through late here. Can he find a gap? I'm not sure the New Zealand boat will. And once again, the pressure's on for Nathan Aldridge and his Japanese crew. But they're in the box seat. They're going to turn down and watch them accelerate to Mark 1.
So at mark number one, with a lot of points on the line, look at those speeds go. dipping into 90 kilometers an hour, and it is Nathan Outridge of Japan that gets the whole shot. We could call him the wind whisperer, but I think he's the postman today because he's delivering at mark one in every race. Fantastic start under pressure. Brilliant work by the Japanese boat. And right now, with the Japanese leading and the USA in last, we do have the Japanese jumping up to second overall in Sydney and the USA dropping down to fourth. But things are going to change very quickly in the big breeze. Oh, it's going to be a penalty on Phil Robertson. Surely has to keep clear. He was a bit slow turning up. Look how slow they're getting. This could be the opportunity. Penalty spare. And the penalty on speed for not giving way to the USA. But has the damage been done because of the speed loss? As you saw in the background, Australia comes flying in. There's a big story rumbling as well with Australia. Australia were in seventh and are now up to third. That takes them from fourth and that catapults them now up to third. It is very, very dynamic in that third spot. Relative USA, window boat will keep it clear. Oh, another penalty on Spain. And meanwhile, Japan is running away with this race. They were sitting in fourth place. This is going to be huge for them if Nathan Aldrich on board that Sail GP GBR boat that has been rebranded can win this race. They will punch their ticket into the final. Yeah, and look at these boats diving downwind. Tom Slingsby, what a job. As Japan opposed the final mark eight, a jive here, a blast to the finish. Wow, the crews are having to work hard for this. So it will be Japan on race number five with all kinds of drama that we never could have anticipated as they come through with a stellar performance, winning race number four, and they will win race number five and then wait and see to what their fate will deliver them. Well, the USA have just gone around the last win with Mark just ahead of Spain. That is absolutely crucial. So the Australians now, guys, have moved into second place ahead of New Zealand. So it'll be Japan, Australia, and New Zealand going one, two, and three. Expect a lot of aggression from Phil Robertson, but I love where the Australian boat is pinning the other two out. Slingsby started to show his form on that Australian boat in the last race as he goes well. An aggressive turn down by the Spanish. Blocking move coming here. But it's going to be tight between Australia and the USA. Wow, how did the USA get through there? The pole position perfectly lined up for Tom Slingsby on board. Australia It's going to be tight. They all look a little early to me. They're killing speed. Watch them turn down. They're going to score. Jimmy Smith on board the USA, perfection, but it's going to be Tom Slings being a faster angle than I think can go around him before Mark 1. And Mark number one in the final race of the day, it's winner take all, Slings be going head to head with Spino. Just in time for Tom Slingsby on board the Europe Australian boat there. It was over 90 kilometers an hour on that reach to mark one. Right on the edge, Jason Waterhouse, flight controller. Tom Slingsby in perfect harmony. And let's see if they can keep it smooth. The leader here gives them great control. And at the moment, it's not enough for the Spanish team in third. So we see the Spanish boat here rushing in to attack. The boundaries come quickly. Need to settle things down on board that Spanish boat and try and start catching back up. They're nearly 200 metres behind as we see Australia and the USA tack right in front of the fans on Shark Island and they're going to love seeing that crew stretching away with Tom Slings being the crew moving out in front. Stand up Australia, look at that on Shark Island. There's some very, very happy Australians there cheering their boys and girls home for what will be a huge victory in home waters. Around mark number eight, it is Australia. Remember, the Aussies won in Great Britain at Plymouth. They won in Denmark. They won in Cadiz. And here comes Tom Slingsby and the Flying Moons. They will win in Sydney. Uh, yeah, everyone's, uh, we've got a target on our back now for sure. Uh, yeah, we've won four out of the last five events and we're, we're sailing really well. None of that will matter when we hit San Francisco. It's all going to be who performs in San Francisco. So, look, we've got a lot of confidence. We're sailing great as a team. We feel we're strong in all conditions and we're impro only improving. So, look, it's a real confidence booster, but for me it's pretty sweet to win in Australia again. Hang on, Stevie, Freddie, this, this, 
I've just seen a yachting legend step on board. John Bertrand. What a boy. And he is America's Cup and yachting royalty, the skipper of Australia too, that won the America's Cup for Australia in 1983, ending 132 years of American supremacy. What a total legend <laughs> passing over that very cool steering wheel to the Australian crew, John Bertrand. What an event. Final thoughts, Stevie, first for you as we make the turn towards San Francisco. Well, I just think Tom Slingsby's delivered under the pressure. That Australian crew, when it really came on, was incredible. But also, Nathan Outridge and his Japanese team. I mean, what a body blow they took yesterday. And they've come off the block with two wins today. Nearly found that place in the final. I cannot wait to get to San Francisco. And the final sailed Grand Prix in the United States is going to be unbelievable.